when I when I get the resources. But um, one of them is Hua Bao. That means like a bonus or a dividend or something like that. Before you start to reap the actual reward, you always have the little small, um, how to say, uh, small reward in the front, uh, bonus in the front. So these bonus are for the children's next generation. The actual lion share goes to the actual people who do it. And if they do a big deeds, they usually do not, uh, this world cannot um, fulfill their good fortune. They will usually either go to heaven or go to a better human realm. So we need to understand this also on the side of negative, which is bad deeds. If bad deeds is big enough, at first you will get sick, you will get, uh, you will get, you know, a lot of um, unfortunate. Uh, someone pass away, someone you like, or uh, in relationships not smooth and stuff like that, causing troubles. And then if unrepentant and left fester, as I share the pictures of um, Ten Health, it will, it might actually actually happen. Uh, we have to pay for that lion share of negative karma in there. So these are all balance. This is what Leo Fan mentioned when he, um, what, what Master Yun Bu mentioned when in the first chapter, uh, I think he talked to Leofan, Leofan and realized it, say, long life and short life is one. Good fortune and bad fortune is one. They're all one thing. They're all going back to zero because all the good you did, we need to be repaid in the three upper rim. All the bad you did, we need to repay in the lower three rims. Going to the lower three rims is to burn away your bad karma. Going to the upper three rims is to burn away your good karma. So basically, pay your debt or the bank paying you the bonus. So in in the end, it was to go back to the balance. So we, we have a few accountants here, right? In the end of the day, you need to reconcile the record, plus and minus. So we can use this uh, understanding into karma, which is very close to us because we always have to reconcile every day, uh, how much I pay, how much I get. So obviously, as a beginner, we do not um, able to do that one heart uh, not uh, not moving, no wandering thoughts, no discrimination. So we need to understand why we need to be careful about these calculations, because this thing will um, affect right now how much we get or how much we lose. And our goal is not to be affected by lose and gain. Wu huan de huan shi in Chinese. So be very uh, important. Learning this is to encourage us to do it. Ultimately, the right attitude is what Leo Fang would say later, um, let it go. Whatever you do, make sure you do right thing, avoid wrong thing. But when you do that, do not attach to it. Uh, just do what you need to do, say what you need to say, and then move on. So that's how I see it, obviously. You guys, uh, we can discuss about it. Um, beyond these stories, there are another case of a, I like this one, uh, being a soldier. Obviously, we are not soldier, but being an officer, reinforcement, uh, people who has authorities over people, they all usually need to exercise extra caution. And I like this guy who is, um, I think, Yang Xiaochong or something. And he has been assigned a task to eliminate the bandits in the in the mountains and he was given this task and list of all the bandits name they know the name so he exercised exercise extra work than he needed by assigning white flag to each in the innocence among the bandits so like they don't kill the innocents the one few days before they assign a white flag tell them to put the flag on that exact day exact time and this works uh, to the favor of the officials and everyone they capture or kill are not innocent. They save up to 10,000 people. As you can see, the merit is huge. And the children, as, as you can see, they all got into the imperial examinations. So there are more you, you can read from the actual book itself, but all of these are people who do not um, do it for the sake of uh, merits alone. They just do it at the right time. They, they, they take they, they, they were given an assignment or they were uh, uh, doing it out of their heart they're trying to get uh, do the right thing you know trying to share the food 
to the poor, uh, trying to do the job right. Do not uh, kill, wrongly accuse or wrongly kill the uh, uh, innocent people. Uh, and also loot, do not loot people trying to save life. So all these people, the reason they get, get this merit is not because they sit there and say, I want to get this merit. It's because they, in their own position, own walks of life, they they put others before themselves. And that's why they deserve it. And you can see why it's very fair. So for us, we also uh, keep an eye out and always learn to be ready to help to give uh, a bit of our uh, own ability to contribute um, whenever the need comes or arise because rest assured the heaven will repay the deeds. So card law and cause and effect will repay the deeds. Always remember that in hand. It doesn't matter if you get uh, wrongfully accused or treated. So that's the kind of mindset if we everyone calculate, uh, uh, everyone cultivate, sorry, uh, the world will be at peace. Not, not, because I saw a lot of Facebook comments, oh man, don't trust anyone. I always get wrongly accused. That's very true. It's, it's hurtful. And some, sometimes people might even you know, sue you for helping them, saving their life. Um, there are cases like that. And I'll bring out how absurd it is. But uh, there's also a way to eliminate the negative karma. But um, it's not easy. So finishing the stories, uh, we'll go into the that we can discuss. Um, there are eight pairs of goodness, and I uh, want to drag on, on, but eight pairs of goodness must be uh, precisely think about and discussed. Uh, first pair, we talk, that's uh, what we talked about last session, up to the first pair of goodness, real and false goodness. So to summarize, there are eight pairs of goodness uh, that we should understand and identify what is and what is not uh, goodness. First one is false and real. Second one is crook and straight. Third one is obvious and hidden. Fourth one is apparent and non-apparent. Fifth one is proper and improper. Uh, seventh one is half and full. Sorry, six, uh, seven one is half and full. Seven one, sorry, six one is half and full. Seven one, one is big and small. And the last one is easy and hard. So there are some of them quite obvious, but some of them are a bit muddy, apparent and non-apparent. I mean, uh, apparent and actual, proper and improper. I was struggled a bit last time when I practiced talk, uh, these two topics. So I hope that today I can give you guys more clear answer on this one uh, beyond the textbook one. So the first one is real and false. Uh, real and false, as you can see, the word is straightforward, and they use Master Yun Gu, uh, Zhongfeng to uh, exemplify what is real, what is false goodness. And and this story goes by Master uh, Zhongfeng ask, what do you think is good and false to the scholars? And the scholars all say that. Now, before that, all the scholars criticized Buddhist, um, uh, Buddha's um, karma as non, uh, how to say, reflect. I mean, it's not reflecting reality because good people, you know, good, good people, they still got poverty, they still got um, bad treatments, they still got their descendants still not doing well. Bad people get rich and get all that wealth and power and positions. So how is it fair, you know? I mean, if Buddha says that all good deeds will be paid in kindness and bad deeds will be paid in punishment, then where, where is this? What is this? So uh, Master Zhongfeng say, Ay, your, your eyes have not been cleansed. The lens you see do not uh, attach from the, do not detach from the bias and prejudice. What you can see is one life. You will cover up only in one life. You can't see what happens before. You can't see what happens after. So how can you see the reality? As it, as it is. How can you look at things as what it is? Well, what you see is not what it is. It is not what it is, Alex. So, uh, so uh, when that happens, when you're clouded by first a lot of personal afflictions inside that poisons your will, uh, a lot of bias and all that, emotions, stuff like that, and also inability to see is ignorant, inability, inability to see what actually happens in your past life and your future life, then you will recognize good and good as bad, bad as good. 
most of the time because you can't, you don't know, basically, you don't know. And we always have grudge against unfairness of the world, the society. As you can see on all that revolution, rebel, rebellion, obviously, if one person mismanage the countries and the company and stuff, obviously, there will be takeover and, 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 and rebellion and stuff. But what I'm trying to say is personal attitude. If we have that mindset of this is not fair, you know, what is this? Uh, how to say, you know, in Chinese, they always say, oh, it's not fair, you know, the heaven's not fair. Then I'll definitely guarantee to you guys, like, you will not, um, your life will not get any better. In the very least, your life will get more miserable and more cocooned into that thinking, and you get more and more and more hateful and more, and more spiteful, and then you reflect that kind of mindset towards people around you. Especially in work, you will hear a lot of people. Some people just flap nonstop about everything, like cynical about everything. So do not be that person, guys. I mean, cause and effect happens in three lives. All right, past three life, not three life, as in past, present, future. So once we understand that, we can see these people as poor, uh, as Korean, as like I like. If you understand past, present, future. If you understand that, then what you feel right now, although painful, hateful, and all that, you we understand that this is your past karma. You got to pay for it. Better pay for it now than pay for it when you die. Always remember that. When you pay for it, good things will definitely come to you. If we can hold ourselves, at least do not upscale the conflict. But so this is this is why we call it real and false goodness. Real goodness always comes from the heart always comes from um, the roots of the things. So when the, uh, Master uh, Zhong Feng explains what is really good and bad, he did not just reply. He asked, what do you think is good? What do you think is bad? And then, such like Socrates and Plato, right? every time they will ask questions, they will ask back the question instead of answer it for you. What fun is that if people just give you the answer? You're going to have to you know, think it yourself. So it's a bit sad that way. So everyone just answer like being polite, being respectful. Um, how to say, appear to be polite and respectful is kind. And then hitting people, scolding people is bad. Uh, and then Master Zhong Feng say not necessary. Yes, it's bad, but not necessary. Bad, bad. And then someone who reads or hordes after the monies and embellish the funds are bad. It's like, yeah, it's bad, right? And then someone who's uncorrupted and clean is real. And then Master Zhongfeng say, not necessary. So this point still gets me until now. Uh, until this one person in the history that I understand why he said that. And then he keeps going, people keeps going with the worldly perception of good and bad. And Master Zhongfeng say, not necessary. He did not say no. He didn't say yes. He said, not everything is clear cut like that. So, going back to the hitting people and feeding people, because we understand that hitting has a lot of level. And those, whatever we call domestic violence, I just have to put that out there. They're not talking about really violent things. This is like a parents, maybe, you know, turn far, or sometimes when. Uh, I, I I can't find a story for it yet, but the theory is um, hitting and scolding people can be interpreted as treating you not with polite. Say, uh, children throwing tantrum. Uh, but I think that will be easy, right? Because it's parents. But what about adults, right? When 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 adults are not behaving properly and they were, for our bring example, Hong Yi Da Si, Master Hong Yi the only student of Master Ying Guang, our patriarch of Pure Land. Uh, he himself, uh, how he educate his students is, how to say, when he saw his students behaving badly or not doing well, he don't, he don't score and anything. He just sit there. I mean, we diverged, but he just sat there and not eat. And then the rest of the student was like, my master don't eat. Imagine one day Master Ching Kong sit in front of you, he don't eat. And then you guys just eat. Like, okay. You guys eat, and then he just sit there and don't eat. And you guys obviously like, what's wrong? What's wrong? The boss is not. I mean, the master is not eating. And then, then they all reflect. Oh, someone's doing something wrong, and then they they have to do it themselves. But 
in the context of this one, maybe is some people who was very bad and something you have to stop it. So um, being polite is not apparent. It's not necessarily good. Some people being polite because they're trying to get something. If their politeness is not put in the right place, they're just trying to put a face. I want, I'm not trying to tell everyone to be doubtful, but I'm, I'm trying to say that if you want to see things as they are, all right, in the in the surface you don't have to see. I mean, you have to have, you don't have to expose them. But as a person, as a cultivators, we need to know what is right and wrong in our heart. It's for us, so we need to know that what's the ruler, where's the ruler, and every case is different. Sorry, Yong Ming, uh, Venerable Master Yong Ming. So he, I think it's him or Shan Dao, one of the person in Tang Dynasty. Yep, Shan Dao. So back in Shan Dao, he, uh, in, in Tang Dynasty, he was an official and he embellished the funds every day. But he, his family condition does not improve at all. He's still living in a very frugal and poor lifestyle. Everyone was like, you embellish funds. So he was called eventually and submitted to uh, the court. And then he was trial and sentenced to death, basically, back then. Even now in China, they still sentence you to death if you embellish. Is it? Right? I, I forgot. I think so. Chiang Pi or something like that. So, talking about the, the Tang Dynasty one, he was sentenced to death, but he's smiling and he's not moving. It's like, this guy, like, I saw a lot of, because if, if I'm the judge, like, I keep seeing people breathe after the money. And there are a few cases people were laughing. When they got punished, they would be like, oh, I, I'm innocent. Please don't kill me. Stuff like that. He, he just sit there and relax. So everyone report to the emperor. And then they they check his household usage. Obviously, if you want to prove this person is corrupted, you look at their household. They are you know, treasurer, right? I don't know. Like If you guys give that statement, financial statement on the court order. So this person has spent so much money and stuff like that, more than they can earn. So this person is, you know, suspicious. But they really, I think he checked his household. Everything's normal. And he's even lived below poverty line or something. And so the emperor was like, this is a very special case. Look at him when you're going to lop his head off. If he has no expression of fear, stop. If he's like any, num any normal uh, corrupted official, please don't kill me. And just off with, off with his head. So, um, so basically... <laughs> The execution take place. He's just sit there and then smiling, and then <laughs> when they try to lock, it's like this guy is not flinching at all. And then so, so everyone report back to the to the official, and for sure back to the emperor. Emperor's like this is not a normal person. Ask him. I want to see him. So this uh, when he was a a lay person, he's actually also Xu. Same surname as Master Jing Kong, Xu, uh, uh, Xu, Mr. Xu. So he went in front of the emperor, and then emperor asked, "Why do you embellish the funds?" He said, "Oh yeah, I use the funds to save the poor. It's basically Robin Hood, but then not without killing people." So he's like, "Okay, well, go to. The, I mean, I'll send you to the Buddhist monk temple because uh, because he's like, I I don't mind. I mean, no, the emperor said, don't you fear death." Because this is punishable by death according to the law. And then he's like, nah, nah, it's fine. Uh, as long as I can help people, uh, it's, it's my, my little life does not matter anyway. Something like that. I'm paraphrasing a lot here. So, uh, and then the emperor was like, this guy is not normal people. To send him to the temple, he will be of a great achievement. So, going back to here, even though one person, obviously right now when we saw people corrupted and all that, usually they are really corrupted. Like, not what Master uh, Shan Dao is. Um, but we need to leave that little space for that possibility. That's what I'm trying to say. Real and false is not apparent. Just wait and observe, basically. So that's it for the real and false. He summarized with, if you benefit only yourself, only thinking only yourself, then it's bad. If your action is truly out of genuine concern for others, then it's real. So only for yourself, only calculate, being calculative only for yourself, then it's considered false. If you do it out of the uh, heart to help, you know, no matter the methods, you truly want to help. You do not have any intention to uh, harm, but you just want to help, even though your action might be harming at the time because of the circumstance. 
be very careful with that one, right? Um, it can be an excuse, but if you are truly genuine to help others, then it's considered as real goodness. So using that theory, if the intention is not right, so he start from there, if you intention is right, even though you appear as beating people, scolding people, scolding, we can understand, like people just do not give you face and tell you straight away what goes wrong. You should not do that. And if you can take it and change yourself, your world is bigger and you actually improve. A lot of people might appear as respectful and say, ah, oh, it's fine. You, it, you are okay. Um, some, they being compassionate, some, they just trying to, uh, you know, they, if people don't tell, points out your problem, you will never learn it. So basically, that's what I'm trying to say. Like, if you truly benefit people, you're willing to risk, you know, being in a bad relation with that person, then seeing that person going into the depths of wrongdoing, then uh, I can, we can all agree this is good deeds. Uh, this is real goodness. Because they're willing to risk not being uh, in good relation with you, risk the relationship, then having you falling into the depths of wrongdoing. So if there is someone in your life like this, guys, cherish it. This is a, this is a treasure, no matter how hard to bear. Okay, so what else? Same thing. Uh, also, he used another case of re reinforce. If a person who follows their heart is real, if a person that follows the uh, trace of other people is false. So if you just follow what other people is doing, um, then it's not, not there yet. It's not a real goodness. It's, it's still false. Obviously, when you started, you learn from what other people are doing. But eventually, if, if, if it's up to you, I think in the case of Mr. Yu, who met the kitchen god that I share last week, guys, like the comics, it's even better. It, it reflects what Leo Fan is trying to say in a more concrete way. Because he himself is like this. He follows other people who do good deeds because he wants to, in Chinese word, Wu Ming Diao Yu. He wants to, he wants to fish for the reputation for the PR. He is like that back then. And it takes a kitchen god to warn him. Like, this is what happened when you do this. You are not for real, guys. That's why you have all this misfortune. And his misfortune includes his children losing, uh, Three or out of four children or three children, uh, all die except one. The only one that survived was lost in the middle of playground, and it happens for decades. It tortures their family for uh, the pet, the couple forever. So that karma is that serious. Obviously, not on that one account. There are a lot of trespassings. So that's why it's important to get this right. And the last principle, the first principle is. Benefit everyone is good. A real benefit only yourself is false. The second principle is follow your heart is real. And follow the uh, so follow the, the appearance of goodness from others is bad, uh, is false, not bad, false. And then the last one is uh, it's a bit deep. It's like doing for the sake of doing is real. I mean false. Doing I don't say wu wei er wei zhe zhen you wei er wei zhe jia. So if you just do for the sake of doing, then it's false. It's like pretentious. Way or way to, just you do it out of your natural um, uh, attitude. Like you just do it, then it's real. Some people just have it, have that zhao zuo. In Chinese, we call it zuo uh, zuo, act, act, acting, acting. You know what I mean? It's not real. So eventually, when we start, we all like that. I'll be honest, like, I'm like that as well. Like, yeah, I do good deeds. Yeah, look at me. Give me good marks. And then when eventually, the more you do it, the more you understand, you get more, 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 more in depth of what you're doing and it gets to your heart. And then, and then from there, your skill and getting better. And then you, you, you truly do it out of there. So that's it for false and real goodness.